finally had a chance to see firsthand the use of the RBC 500, and it's certainly something to behold. But about that right after we list the most interesting events that happened in our country during the week. So, ICL Group has launched an Annapolis Special Economic Zone, one of Russia's largest surface mount, electronic printed circuit board and computer manufacturing plants. The plant with an area of more than 8,000 square meters has combined the PCB surface mounting central office, the conveyor lines of computer manufacturing and a new test lab. The technological capacity is 300,000 motherboards per year with further increase up to 1 million boards per year. The Onega Shipbuilding Shipyard started construction of the second small icebreaker. The vessel will provide winter navigation, caravan escort, towing of ships, as well as service the water area of ports and infrastructure. Icebreakers of this class can operate at water temperatures from minus 2 to plus 30 degrees Celsius and air temperatures from minus 40 to plus 34 degrees Celsius. Oxitec's digital factory was inaugurated. It manufactures telemetry devices, sensors, batteries, and software development. The totality of technological solutions ensures automation of gas distribution facilities. The enterprise is equipped with three lines, their capacity is from 4 to 7,000 devices per year. System Products for Construction has launched a production line for adhesive chemical anchors. The company will be able to produce up to 2.5 million pieces of fasteners per year. This will average 75% of the domestic market for chemical anchors demanded in the transportation and construction industries. The first gas-fueled municipal vehicle built in Russia was handed over to the customer. Thanks to its removable attachments, the natural gas-powered machine is used for year-round cleaning of roads, sprinkling them with anti-halalit materials, and transportation of goods. Cost-effectiveness is also a significant advantage. LNG-powered machinery is 50% cheaper than diesel-powered counterparts. The Moscow-based manufacturer began to supply ATMs of its own design. Three bank partners have already received the first devices. A few more organizations are testing. The devices consist of 80% domestic components and are equipped with their own software. The capacity of the plant is up to 15,000 ATMs per year. In Odigea, the third final stage of the logistics center, Azan, which was built in Tusheshki district, was launched. The cost of the project amounted to about 6 billion rubles. Azan's investment in equipment reached almost 2.5 billion rubles. The area of the logistics complex exceeds 107,000 square meters, the release specifies. After the launch of the third stage almost 2,000 people will work here. Star City hosted a presentation of a new Centaur robot that could be used for lunar exploration. The Centaur robot includes three modules, it's a torso with manipulators, a wheeled platform for traveling, and a flying drone. Each module is equipped with an autonomous control system. Barnall International Airport named after German TTIV gave a start to the construction of a new air terminal complex for domestic airlines. The area of the new domestic air terminal will be about 10,000 square meters, which is twice the area of the current airport. Once opened, the terminal will be able to handle up to 600 passengers per hour, with an annual capacity of more than 1 million people. The opening of the Technology Center for Additive Manufacturing took place at Samara Korolyov University. One of the center's tasks will be to create high-tech production of gas turbine engine parts and assemblies. The system developed for this center will reduce the time required to prepare parts production by more than half. At the same time, labor intensity and production costs will be reduced by 30 to 40 percent. Now let's move on to the RBC 500, finally had a chance to see firsthand the use of this weapon. And that's certainly something complete. The name of this ammunition reads like encrypted technical information on some sophisticated household product. But behind each letter lies a different aspect of its martial purpose. And, as they say, one is worse than the other. The shope in the second part indicates that it is a balloon bomb, fragmentation bomb, aircraft bomb. And it's also self-aiming and creates about the same effect as about three regular FAP 500s working on infantry. Such a bomb can cover up to 15 hectares at a time, or for clarity, about more than 20 soccer fields. But there is a separate gift for tanks too, a special stuffing, which stands for SPBE, self-targeting battle element. At the end of the video, we'll show a video of what it actually looks like. The RBC-500 is used for its combat purpose when it is not necessary to fell a target like a monolithic bridge or a large industrial building used as a citadel. It's for the advancing forces.
And that's when all living things hide. I told some people not to be a nuisance. It took a long time to wake up, started up with a squeak and seems to be slowly but surely gaining momentum with the inertia of a huge cast iron roller. This is how an RDK-500 bomb of the 1987 model looks like. This is a picture of the NGO Basalt. The predecessors of such weapons, though not as clever, appeared in the second year of World War II. We are talking about PTABs, anti-tank aerial bombs. Small bombs that our strike planes drop directly on enemy armored vehicles. Its main debut occurred at the Kursk Bulge in the summer of 1943, although even before that there were cases of experimental use. The effect, especially in the first few days, was overwhelming. The bomb had no problem penetrating more than 50 millimeters of armor with its shaped jet, which was fatal for the roof of any German or even Soviet tank. The main carrier of this fiery horror from the heavens were IL-2 attack aircraft, taking up to 180 units in special containers of 78 each. Then the Germans, of course, came up with tactics to act against such raids, but somehow suffered from them for the rest of the war. Not without reason the designer of this weapon, Comrade Lariano Ivan Alexandrovich, in 1946 received the Stalin Prize of the Second Degree for PTABs, and even earlier the Order of Lenin. I wish they didn't give out awards like that. There are even reports from the front where our attack pilots called them extremely effective. But back to today's day. And by the way, PTABs were the progenitors of much of today's ammunition of this type. But to tell the story of cluster munitions in recent times, you have to make a dozen videos like this, and all would be insufficient. So let's get back to the RBC 500. They were designed in the mid-1970s to 80s. By then, both Cold War adversaries had amassed substantial arsenals of a wide variety of bombs, some of which the world community even tried to ban. But bans are, as they say, for the weak, and so the Soviet Union and the United States signed only those conventions that were favorable to them, but actively worked on munitions accuracy. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Work on further development of the RBC-500 was suspended at the Moscow-based Basalt Research and Production Enterprise, where our main aviation munitions were designed. However, all the technical documentation has, of course, been carefully stored in well-protected archives. It soon became clear that the military and political situation in the world did not favor such a pacifist gesture. And already in 2016, the developers presented the newest product, a line of RBC-500 bombs, in at least three different variants. Why they weren't applied before, I can't imagine. Perhaps not enough had been accumulated or out of some humane motive. Be that as it may, it is a very dangerous and powerful weapon. Not a wonderwaff, as foreign sources like to advertise their own products, but a very powerful product of the domestic defense complex. And it's certainly better to see it than to talk about it a hundred times. What follows is a video of the use of this weapon.